Hey everybody, this is Brad Bruce and I'm here with Jace Marsiglia and you're listening to the 5195 Podcast. Yes sir. His free. His free. <laughs> Had us a little bit of a technical... <laughs> snafu. Snafu, some... Some some hissiculties. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it was? It, it had nothing to do with the equipment. Mm-hmm. I was just breathing, like whistling through my nose every time you said, do you hear a hiss? And I was like, and I was like, no, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. And you were just like, God damn it, I have to buy new shit. And I waited till you, let, you pulled the trigger on Amazon. I do have to cancel my order because we, I was we like, did just order a bunch of shit <laughs> on Amazon. It was just my nose. <laughs> So what's up, man? How are you? I'm all right, dude. How you doing, man? Good. Better now that that... I don't do good with technical difficulties. Whatever that shit was. Yeah. And the thing was, I don't know if anyone would have really cared, but I know that we're perfectionists. That's exactly what it is. So there was some. There was something going on there that's gone now. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's gone. Hooray. Whatever. So mm-hmm. we were kicking around ideas for topics for today. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we landed on something kind of fun. And it could be an ongoing thing that just kind of pops up here and there. Oh, I think it definitely has to be an ongoing thing. Yeah. I mean, the genre that we love so much sort of lends itself to it. Musicals. Yeah. 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 You know, and so (laughs) whenever I feel the need to twirl in the aisles of green and remind people that. This from the guy who don't like musicals. That the hills are alive. That's a pretty good reference. Well, like I said, the one mu- the musicals that I do like are from like the 40s and 50s. Okay. All right. Fair. Yeah. I'll give it to you. If Julie Andrews is in it, I'm down. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Okay. All right. Duly noted. Yeah. Good. Good. If so Cl- If Clint Eastwood's painting his wagon, not so much. <laughs> 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 I can only suspend my disbelief so much. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Um, so what is our topic for today? Well, uh, we were talking about, since we are a horror show... For the most part, it's probably, mm-hmm. it's like a 70, 30. Yeah. What does every horror nerd like to do, but take a fra- franchise and rate the ones you like in order of least to best or vice versa, whatever you want to do. Yeah. I think we're going least to best. You want to start from the bottom, climb up and then lift the arm of your champion. Yes. You know. And what franchise have we chosen for today? Today, I think we agreed to just go back and do the original Halloween saga. Because goddamn is it a saga. It's a saga and it's a choose your own adventure. It really is. It is. I think Myers and I would say Leatherface are the only two franchises that you could veer wildly into one plot or completely skip one. Amityville too. Probably. Yeah, Amityville is a big one. Mm -hmm. And that's not even counting the litany of just Amityville titled ripoffs. Yeah. We're just talking about like the core, what, nine? I think there's only nine legitimate Amityville films. And then after that, it's like Amityville, Bigfoot, Amityville. Shark. Shark. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it just got to a point where there's like literally dozens of Amityville films that have absolutely nothing to do Amityville with. Amityville Karen. Yep. Um, <sighs> I'm not joking. There's an Amityville toilet. Really? Swear to God. Okay. Amityville toilet. There's Amityville in the Hood. Okay. Which is kind of dumb because Amityville is just in Long Island. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you misplace an entire city into the Hood, but Amityville also travels to space. But all great franchises go to space. They apparently do. <laughs> you know, at some point or another. I guess it only took Amityville like 20 movies. Unfortunately, but... Myers never got to space. Myers never went to space, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's kept his boots on the ground for the most part. Yeah. Rounding back to Myers. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. That's a big franchise to start with. Yeah. But we were talking, and if we do this, probably the Halloween, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street franchises are probably the ones that I at least, and I don't know about you, probably similar, grew up watching enough of repeatedly that we don't have to sit here and go, you know what? Let's go watch all 13 again Yeah, and make a list. Instead, we were able to just kind of go, let's just sit down and make a quick list because we know what the fuck we like and Mm -hmm. what we don't. It's like a song. It is. You heard it enough, you know it word for word. Yep. And frankly, I mean, there's, I watch horror movies year round, but the Halloween box set comes out October 1st and I just knock my way through them all so that I watch them annually. 
They're always fresh. I, I don't do that, but I, I do throw them on periodically throughout the year. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I would be lying if I said I watched them all. Uh-huh. I did that this maybe a year or two ago when I was putting reviews on Instagram. Uh, I did go through October and just started at one, and I ended with Halloween Ends, which was just released in theaters okay. at the time. So that was the only time in October where I went through even the ones that I'm not a fan of, which we'll get to. But for the most part, when Halloween rolls around, I probably watch one through four, and I'm probably good. You're good with that. Yeah. I mean, mine's even less than that, but... Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, who wants to start? You know what? I've started the last couple okay. of shows. Okay. I'll start this you, one. You go for it. I'll start this one. So so we are going to go least to best. So we both have 13, correct? Correct. All right. So I am <clears> going to start with a shocker. <laughs> okay. This um, is your dead last. Yeah. Okay. I'm starting with Halloween 2, 2009. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Yes. Okay. Um... Man, mm. man, like I didn't understand hobo Michael Myers. Yeah, he he wasn't even wearing the mask most of the movie, so it was no. like he's just a guy. Yeah, um, with mommy issues, which is a Jason thing, you know. I didn't really get that one either, and it is low on my list. But yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not a big fan. I wasn't a fan at all. I mean, and like obviously, I seen the majority of them in the theater. Sure. And of course, because it is Halloween and it is Rob Zombie, I was like, you know, I'm gonna go regardless. Uh, you know, once 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 one of our franchises hits the theater, they're gonna get my money, I guess. Yeah, and it's our damn fault that there's so many. It is our fault. <laughs> it is our fault <laughs> for that's, better or worse. That's why I'm not a hundred percent like bitching it and just you know. No, you can't. No, we we contribute to all of this. We do because I mean, do I own them? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, several different versions of it. Yeah. DVD, Blu-ray, the 4K, like... Yep. Yeah. So, but it was just... The movie didn't make any sense to me. No, it's really just its own slasher movie. Mm -hmm. It was just this bizarre fever dream of, like, shit going on. There like, was a lot of... Not subliminal, but like... Like you said, fever dream. A lot of artistic... Stuff going on. There's, and everyone got like, I go to the horse. Why? There's the horse. Yeah. There was the, the white horse. There was his mom being like a ghost. She yeah. basically looked like she did in the Living Dead Girl video. Yeah. Um, and one of my things that I really, here's one of the things that I like about it, to be honest. Okay. Daniel Harris and Steven Dorff playing the brackets. Mm -hmm. When tragedy befalls Sheriff Brackett, Dorff's performance is amazing. And it's heartbreaking. And it's probably the best performance in Rob Zombie's two films. I, yeah, because, I agree with that. Because he brought it in a way that was like, I feel this father's pain. Yeah. Ouch, 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 ouch. And he it was very convincing. Um, and I also give it credit for doing its own thing, even though I didn't really like its own thing. He wasn't just rehashing Halloween 2, 1981. Right. He started there with the hospital, but the movie veers wildly into something else. And I gave him credit for that because he wasn't being beholden to anything but his own previous film. Mm -hmm. Fine. So it was more original than his yeah. first one. That said, what is it? It's just a movie about a brute in hobo gear killing people on Halloween. It could have been anybody. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not to take away from Tyler Maine, who is just a hulk of a guy. He's a very imposing Michael Myers. Not to take away from Scout Taylor Compton, who is a good actress, but he just has her wailing every line in this movie. All she is is just a screaming, hysteric mess. And that's it. I didn't think he gave her an arc. I didn't think he gave her any sort of justice or you know, heroic. It was just, you're going to scream and scream and scream and scream. And then at the end, we'll give you this little smirk, like evil has transferred. And yeah. I was like, that's not an ending. You know, it really felt like someone who didn't want to make this movie. Right. I personally don't know. No. Yeah. Neither do I. I don't I know mean, if this he was just roped a, into it. Yeah. This was just me guessing. It's just, I do know he agreed to do the first one. Right. I think he wanted to do the first he one. He did, which is ironic because... And I had heard from another podcast, mm -hmm. he said he would never do it. 
Well, what's funny is there was a documentary from like 2006 or seven called Going to Pieces. And it was about the rise and fall of slasher films starting from like the 60s on up. And Rob Zombie's interviewed. He says in his interview for this movie, what's the point of remaking stuff? You know, what, what, what would I do if someone came up to me? And I think his quote was something like, gee, how could I make the wild bunch better? Yeah. You know, and he's, he was kind of just kind of being snarky about the whole idea of remakes. In the same movie, they show a, a newspaper clipping of Rob Zombie tapped to remake Halloween. And I'm like, you just shat all over remakes. And then you were like, yeah, give me the check. And it was like, did you want to do Halloween or is what you said bullshit? Uh-huh. You know, I don't know. And I and, and the thing is, I, I got to give Rob credit. He's usually a shoot from the hip kind of guy. It could very well have been someone was like, you don't have to remake Halloween, make it your own. And he went, well, maybe I can do something about that. And it could have been an idea that he had floating around. But I didn't like where he went with it. And Halloween 2 was just an extension of something that wasn't great to begin with, in yep. my opinion. And we're going to get shit for this. Oh, I know. Because I, I know. have no idea. I had no idea until the second one how many people loved Rob's first one. Which leads me to my lowest on the totem pole. Okay. Rob Zombie's Halloween. Okay. Um, the only reason I have it behind the second one is because he basically took the suburban nightmare and turn it into redneck bullshit. The whole point was we weren't in Texas. We weren't in some backwoods motel with a gator in the pond. Right. You know? It was the Myers, not the Sawyers. Right. It was, it wasn't the Manson family in Hollywood Hills. It wasn't the Hills have eyes. You were in suburbia. And the, the reason Michael was scary was because we lived in suburbia. We didn't live off the beaten path and the boonies. Some of us did, but it was like we went into this affluent, supposedly Chicago town of Haddonfield and stepdad's talking about fucking his stepdaughter and, you know, your baby just cries and shits and blah, blah, blah. And mom's a stripper. And it's like, you just made everyone the same people they were in House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm -hmm. This is Halloween. You're, no. What are you doing? And it just, 10 minutes into the movie, I was like, this is loud and chaotic and what the fuck is going on? 10 minutes of white trash in a neighborhood that they probably couldn't afford on a stripper mom's salary? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Uh -huh. This should have been in a trailer park, you right. know? But it was just, it was one of those deals where 10 minutes in, I'm like, this isn't Halloween. Already, yeah. it's not Halloween. No. And then I know a lot of people like to defend it by saying, well, you gave Michael Myers a backstory. You know, you saw he was fucked up and he's killing animals and he's bullied and his home life is bad. That's every serial killer ever. The whole point of why Michael was scary was it was inexplicable. He was a, what, a six, seven-year-old kid that just snapped and never spoke again, killed indiscriminately, couldn't stop him. Why? Yeah, there was no, no rhyme or reason nobody for knows. it. Yeah. Nobody knows. So it being unexplainable made it more terrifying. It made it scary, but almost to a paranormal uh -huh. extent where you were like, I'm not even, he, he's not quite a God, but he's not a man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whereas Rob Zombie's Halloween was bullied kid pushed too far. Yeah. And that's every CSI episode. It's law and order 101. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it, he didn't, yeah, he gave him a, a background, but it was a useless one. Right. And then after all of that, all of the new stuff, we just kind of quickly for the last hour skirt through John Carpenter's movie and hit all the beats and then roll credits. Yeah. And to me, that was just, it was lazy and it was stupid and needlessly exploitive. Um, I don't know what version most people have seen. The unrated cut, the only reason Michael Myers escapes Haddonfield Hospital is because two orderlies break into his room to gang rape a girl on his bed. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. It could have been anything else. But Rob's like, you know what? We need a gang rape scene so Michael can escape. Mm -hmm. Does not make sense to me. That's just, you're it, just Well, being... it wasn't creative. No, it, it and it was irritating. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, now we're just inserting a rape scene in for shock value for no purpose. Mm -hmm. um, 
And it just, yeah, there, the further into the movie it got, the more I was checking out. Right. I'm like, I just can't, I can't deal with this. And that's the only reason it's behind Rob Zombie Halloween 2 in my list. Yeah. Is because it was so almost insulting, almost like he was wiping his feet on Carpenter's movie. Mm -hmm. Whereas the second one was just. Okay, now you're just doing your own thing, and I can't really fault you for that. Yeah. So that's why mine tops yours at least a well, little bit. Well, then, I mean, keeping with <clears> this <throat> theme, I'll just go ahead and jump into my next one, which is Rob Zombie's Halloween. So both of us have them both at the very bottom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and just interchangeable. They are know? interchangeable, and I do have a lot of the same. <laughs> I do have a lot of the same complaints as you. Sure. Um, one I do have a, a bit different than what you said was I. Uh, nothing against um, Tyler. Man. Oh, sure. Michael Myers was way too big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was way too big. Yeah. In my opinion. When I first saw him, I was like, this this isn't going to work. No, I, I mean, he's imposing. Yeah. He's a scary guy. It's like, Jason, <clears throat> it works. Yeah, Jason. Leatherface, it works. They you know? tower over you. But it, you know? for Michael Myers, it, it, it doesn't work. You know, it, what works, what makes it scary is he's a normal sized guy. You know, he's fucking... Five ten, he's six foot. You know, yeah. And even in the in the original film, he's a slender dude. Even. Yeah, he's not muscular. He's just a guy, right? Right. That's why they called him the Shape. Mm -hmm. He could be anybody. Yeah. And Tyler Maine is not anybody, right? He is a fucking brick wall. Yeah. I and mean, it's I I get that, but yeah. I guess I gave him a little more credit because in both Halloween films. When he got a hold of someone or stabbed somebody, there was a ferociousness to it that wasn't there in other movies. Yes. Way, maybe excessive, but... I mean, it was definitely excessive. <clears throat> yeah, but it was like, yeah, Tyler's making me nervous. He's right. making me nervous And, and see, and the thing is, is like, I always thought Michael Myers was just like, just this killing machine. Right. I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to get creative. I just have to kill. Sure. So he did the job and then he moved on. Mm -hmm. I felt like Rob Zombie's, he took more pleasure in it. It's like he, for, for someone who's supposed to be a mute, you know, this, this, this completely, you know, mono, just nothing to him mm -hmm. guy. It, it felt like he was just like getting off on the kills. Maybe. I mean, I mean, you know, <clears throat> I mean, and, and again, it's like, I saw him in the theater and then I saw him when they were released. Yeah. And the thing is to this day. I don't think I've seen the theatrical cut of either one. Okay. Because every copy I've ever had has been the unrated. Right. You know, so I think I did hear the theatrical one. The only reason he escapes is because he's being marched through a hallway and he just breaks loose. Yeah. Which is, to me, better. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need a gang rape for him to escape. No. no. But uh, I don't think between the two versions it would have – mattered much no it, in no the long run. no I, and and I, and then even the same thing too i hated that he had a backstory you yeah, know like i no. hated that like it's because what do you are you trying to make everyone feel sorry for him right you, and that's the thing you don't humanize monsters no if and you, he if you want them to remain scared yeah you know yeah and there hasn't been a franchise that will mention that hasn't tried that. Mm -hmm. They've all done it at some point. They've humanized Jason. They've yeah. humanized Freddy, uh, Pinhead, you know, uh, Leatherface. They've all been, they've all had a movie or at least a moment in one of these movies where they kind of flip the script on you and go, he might not be all bad. Mm -hmm. And that's no longer scary because now you feel like you can reason with them. And there's nothing about Michael Myers that makes you feel like you should be able to reason with them. Right. You know, he's just... It's just an unstoppable force. He's Yeah, he's got tunnel vision. He's got completely black eyes, sees right through you, and will just mow you down to get to the next person. It's just yeah. one track mind. <clears throat> it, it, yeah, and Rob Zombie gave us Psychology 101. And see, can, here's the thing, too, with... push too far, you know. Yeah, and with with his movies, I will say this, if, if it's some sort of a defense. Mm -hmm. Had he just made him a killer... No Michael Myers attachment. Mm -hmm. If he would have just picked oh, the name in a hat. You mean if he just made a slasher film? Yeah. Like yeah. if you take the Michael Myers element out of his stories, mm -hmm. 
they might make for a better movie. Possibly. You know, um, <clears throat> you know, because it's like, then you'll feel a little better to root for the kid that had the fucked up upbringing. Sure. You yeah. know, and you're then like, also. Because then you're rooting for him to kill these people. Right. That wronged him. That wronged him. It becomes a revenge movie. They failed him. Um, the redneckery would be irrelevant mm -hmm. because I'm not supposed to believe this is Haddonfield. Right. Um, See, that's what I mean. <clears throat> taking all that out. If you take all the Myers stuff out, it just, it would have worked as a slasher film. It definitely would have. And Maybe. it probably even would have worked in two if he would have explained these visions as his psychosis. Sure. You know, this is kind of what he's seeing. This is his like, you know, this is what's going on in his mind. Right. It would have made a little more sense. It's a double-edged sword because it you is. want to do something different, but fans don't want you to. Mm -hmm. And I'm on the fence. I'm one of those that's like, I think you could do something different without compromising the franchise. Yeah. There's ways of doing it. And there we'll, is. And we'll get to those. Okay. Yeah. Um, because my next least, I guess, mm -hmm. we're up to 11 for me. Yeah. Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers from 1995. That's the sixth one. Okay, then let me stop you right there. <clears throat> because okay. so is mine. Yours is also at 11? Yeah, Hall Curse of Michael Myers. No fucking yeah, way. Yeah, so we can dis discuss this one in tandem. In tandem, nice. Yeah. Okay. So for those who don't know, the sixth movie is the third and final in what the franchise is called, like Cult of Thorn. This was something that was started technically in five but because five was so connected to four, four, five, and six are now a trilogy. And by this point, Dimension Films had picked up the Halloween franchise, as well as Hellraiser and probably a couple other big names. And I forget the name of the cat who did it. Something Chappelle? Joe Chappelle? I forget. It may even be a fake name. I know. I know somebody did one as a, like an Alan Smithy kind of deal. You know, really? Yeah. But whoever did Halloween Six, they were going. Their job was more or less to put a cap on the Cult of Thorn plot story okay. arc. So we went back to Haddonfield. Michael's still on the loose, having been broken out of jail at the end of Five by the mysterious man in black, which we'll get to. At this point, there's a cult beneath Haddonfield that is using Michael to impregnate his niece. So now we've introduced incest into the Michael Myers mythology. Another useless plot point. And um, also that his lineage, his bloodline, can continue and the evil can continue to grow. And uh, we bring back little Tommy that... Jamie Lee Curtis was supposed to be babysitting. It's introducing Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd's first movie. I absolutely love Paul Rudd. He is god-awful in this movie. It's not his fault, because I've seen him in movies from this era, and he's a great actor. They made him a complete nut job. He's just a weird, bug-eyed conspiracy theorist, and it's annoying. Mm -hmm. A ailing Donald Pleasance. Walks through the motions in his final performance as anything. It's his final performance, I believe, right? Uh, much less as Dr. Loomis. And it's a thankless task. He's barely in the movie. Um, a lot of his stuff was cut. And there's just a weird ADD MTV vibe about it. There's a lot of flashing lights. There's The finale makes absolutely no sense. There's not a lot that makes sense, but at the end, at least if you were following it to some degree... The big finale underground in the lab, the lab, mm -hmm. like we needed one, it's a lot of flashing lights and screaming, and then we don't, then the mask is on the ground. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's like, I don't, I don't get it. What, what happened in here? It was almost like somebody just went, we got to end it. Just throw something at the screen and we can leave. And it's just, to me, Halloween 6 is one of the laziest, least creative of the Halloween series. It definitely is. It's just, there's no spirit to it. It was clearly made by people that had no interest. And um, <clears throat> I do got to give props, though, to, I believe, producer Daniel Ferrans. Is it Ferrans? Okay. I always screw up his name. Well, look, we're just not good with names. We're not good with names. <laughs> I mean, I'll admit it. I, you know. But Daniel, he 
he produced the movie, and there is a producer's cut that floated around conventions for years mm-hmm. in a bad work print. Um, it's slightly better because it's more plot driven than it is just pack and slash. Lots more Dr. Loomis, lots more time to soak up the last of Donald Pleasance. Mm-hmm. So it's a better cut, but at the same time, uh, having watched it with the commentary with Daniel, the studio, Dimension, or the Weinsteins, whoever, they cut him at the knees every step of the way because the script Daniel had written initially was going to tie together the first five movies and wrap up every loose end. Okay. This was going to be the ultimate Halloween because we weren't just going to close the cult of thorn. We were going to bring Lori back and we were going to have some sort of familial reunion with Daniel Harris's character. And, you know, it was going to, Closed the book Mm -hmm. and the studio was like, now what studio? This would have been dimension. Okay. And, um, I guess studio interference was just so severe that. So Trinkus had no say. I don't think they did. And if they did, it was very little. That's wild. It is because Trinkus up to five, they steered the ship. Oh, their claws in. Yeah. Their claws in six was very much off the reservation. It was not. It just felt like a ship with no captain. Mm -hmm. And for all intents and purposes, I believe the director wasn't interested in doing it anyway. It was a carrot so he can get to the next job. And it feels like that top to bottom. It just feels like a movie made from complete disinterest. And it's just a big, confusing slog. One thing I will say a little bit different is um, Kara Strode. There was no emotion out of her. You know, there was no, Not there was really. no risk. It was just, she was going through the motion. She was, you um, Kara, there's a scene at the table where she's arguing with her dad and there's kind of a back and forth that suggests dad's been inappropriate with her. And it's like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. It was just bizarre. It was just a weird turn. And, yeah. uh, one more nail in its coffin. I remember back in the nineties, Halloween six being made was supposed to star Howard Stern. (laughs) Do you remember this rumor? No. (laughs) Okay. The character's still in the movie. Uh, The cat from Silent Night, Deadly Night, the first one, who was banging Linnea Quigley and gets thrown out the window. Okay. He plays shock jock, such and such, who shows up at the Halloween festival and basically, hey, you know, you're related to Michael Myers. You ever you ever seen his dick, you know, and blah, blah, blah. He's basically, it's all the lines that they would have given Howard Stern. Uh-huh. When you listen to the dialogue, it's so clearly written for Howard Stern. Yeah. And Howard was like, no thanks. And when you watch the movie, I'm like, good on you, Howard. Yeah. Just, I would have let you just write your own lines for this character, mm-hmm. you know, but it was, it was bad. Everything about it just gets on my nerves, to be quite honest. Yeah, same. It wasn't so blatantly offensive as zombies. But it was just dumb. Just a dumb time at the movies. I mean, it almost felt fan filmish to me. It kind of did, you know. And uh, again, like I said, I've I've had the I've had the pleasure of listening to the commentary for that film, and it's not a rainbows and roses commentary. He's Mm -hmm. very candid about the fact that they railroaded every idea he had. Yeah, and to his credit. All of his ideas sounded fucking cool. This could have been a great film, and it just goes to show you studios can come in and just wipe their feet all over it. Because that's that's exactly what happened, and look what you get. Yeah. It's a watercolor mess. Okay, so who wants to go now? I went last, and you said you had your... So you go ahead. You go okay. with 10. Mine is H2O. All right. My number 10 is H2O. Okay. You know, it's not that I hate the movie. It just wasn't entertaining... As a Michael Myers movie. Sure. To me. It felt like so much more stuff going on. Like, I feel like they already had this script done and, and it wasn't a Michael Myers movie. Oh, you're you're thinking this is one that got tailored into a Halloween film. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like, oh, we need a Michael Myers movie. What do we have? And they're like thumbing through scripts and it was like, oh, we got this. This is close enough. And then they just, <laughs> oh, rewrite and let's throw Michael Myers in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. It, maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, it's just... Because, like, like I said, again, I saw it in the theater, and it was like, who directed this? Wes Craven? What's going on? <laughs> Steve Miner. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm like... It was... It was know, just... It, it just had those... It had that mid-90s teen... It did, yeah. And thing. I kept waiting for, like, Nick Cave to play. You're right. You know? 
<laughs> I'm like, you're absolutely right. Oh man. Like is Michael Myers, like, is his mask going to have like a black shroud, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't know. It just, it, it was too, again, like it was kind of all over the place for me. Well, I thought it was obviously, I thought it was more, more cohesive than six. It mm-hmm. was actually a story you could follow. No, it is. Um, but it felt if, if, if the nineties slasher craze, as it were, was a deck of cards. Yeah. It fits right in with all of them and it doesn't stand out at all. Right. It's just part of that dimension Mm -hmm. films milieu, Mm -hmm. right down to the fact that like a pack of cards, the poster is just a bunch of faces fanned out. Yeah. You know, it's just, they had, they even had like a cliched way of doing posters. Yeah. They all look the same. They all look the same. It was the fanned out. Yep. And it was just, it was one of those deals where Halloween H2O felt too much like a product of the things that it inspired. Yeah. And that's not good. And I got to be honest with you, like, you know, that mask was terrible. All of the masks were terrible. I feel like there was half a dozen in that movie. Yeah. yeah. Because it just kept changing. Well, the one that like really stuck out to me that I was like, Jesus, was the, in the round window in the door. Yep. That's oh the, my god! That's the one that I told you earlier when we were kind of chatting about H two O. He looks like a light bulb with a hairpiece. Yeah, with a bad hairpiece. And I think, I, having watched it again not too long ago, I think one of the biggest things that I hate about the Michael Myers mask in that one, uh huh, you can see his eyes perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Michael Myers should have black, mm-hmm. nothing eyes mm-hmm. always. Yeah, I agree. Instead, when you can see his eyes. Not just his eyes, but even a little bit of the skin around it. He looked cross-eyed in a lot of scenes. Yeah. And it was just, that's not scary. <laughs> yeah. You're a cross-eyed light bulb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was a bummer. Yeah, that was, that, was, that, was, that was bad. It is a little higher on my list than yours. Okay. But okay. Uh, I, we'll get to more of that one in a minute here. My number 10 is Halloween Resurrection. Okay. I do like that one less. Yeah. Um, again... We've talked about that one on another episode where I like the plot. Mm -hmm. I do like the idea of several people watching a live stream of Michael butchering a stuck up film crew reality show. Yeah. Nothing wrong there. (laughs) Could have done a little bit without the Busta Rhymes bullshit. (laughs) Uh, I'm with people on that one. But... It just, it it was a movie that halfway in, I was like, okay, I'm down for this ride. Mm -hmm. By the end of the second half, I was like looking at my watch. It just, it wore out its welcome for me. It was a fun idea that kind of, it it lost its course and hit the wall, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's what brings it down to 10 for me. Just the fact that it was a potentially good idea that for whatever reason just didn't stick the landing yeah no i i do feel the same way i do like it I, yeah because i don't hate it the way other people do. yeah no i i do like the movie <clears throat> mine's a little higher on the list than sure it's definitely exactly what you said it, it, it just wears out its welcome it does it really really does but and it's a cool idea I it did, is a cool idea and it was again we talked about h2o being a product of its time yeah resurrection probably more so yeah because now we've incorporated the internet Mm -hmm. and all this and found footage in a way um it was very much a product of its time but well yeah i mean it was it was definitely it was definitely scream scream meets american pie meets mtv and throw in some blair witch project yes you know everyone's wearing the headgear and yeah it was fun to a point Mm -hmm. that's where i leave it yeah you know my number nine is halloween five Okay. You know, and the, the only real problems I had with these were, and I know, and I know you're, you're going to make a good point on, on it, but sure. my, again, is the, the, the mask on the cover is our Michael Myers. It is. The mask in the movie. <laughs> I very, don't know what the fuck that very is. Very much not. I don't yeah. know what that is. It's not a great mask. No, it's not a great mask. It's better than H2O. <laughs> it is better than H2O. It is. But it was like high forehead, slick back hair. Kind of a wide neck. Yeah. It was very, it was a very wide neck. It was like a cobra neck. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was very wild. Uh, yeah. So that took me out of it. The second thing was like location. And we've talked about that. Yeah. Like it just bu- bugged Utah, me out. Because Utah even location. going back to, um, what was it where Laurie Strode was a... 
like a professor in Northern California now? Oh, that was H2O. Yeah, okay, yeah, H2O. It's like, Ver- s- don't. Very California. Yeah, don't, don't. Right. You Which, know what I mean? Did like, it take place in California, though? I think so. At least it was California being California. and Right. Not, you know. But like trying to pass off. Yes. Yeah. Like Whereas that- to me, in Five's defense, um, Utah does look more Midwest mm-hmm. than California or Pasadena. Yes. Um, my beef with Five, which I will get to actually next. Okay. Because <laughs> Five is my number eight. Okay. Well, then let's move to your number eight and we can... Well, actually, I'll do my number nine. Okay. Okay. Because my number nine... Isn't five. Instead, mine is Halloween ends. Really? Yes. Okay. And I've given that one a couple of shots now. Okay. I don't really care for it. Okay. Um, That was a very tepid ending to a very promising trilogy. Okay. By David Gordon Green. Right. And I've joked with people that maybe it's going to be like Halloween 3. And in 40 years, everyone will just love it. Uh Uh-huh. Who knows? But to me, this was not a movie about Michael Myers. This was a movie about basically the kid from Christine, it seemed like. And Michael Myers aging out of his evil and passing it on to this twerp. Mm -hmm. Who didn't (laughs) carry the torch too long at all. I mean, it just kind of, it felt like a lot of build up to nothing. And then we get this awesome fight at the end and then just go home. Yeah. Uh... Didn't care for that. I didn't care for the, the the route they took. Didn't see the point in making this like a doomed romance movie. Mm-hmm. There's nothing very Halloween about it. Just the end. Yeah. It just felt tired and weird and just a little off course. I want And I really wanted to like it. I really did. But I've watched it probably three times now. And I can't wrap my head around it. There's just something about it that just doesn't do it for me. Well, I mean, I will say this. There are things in it that, you know, I myself, I wasn't a fan of, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think just for maybe my suspension of disbelief, I was able to like certain things about it. So, I mean, I'll get to those when when I get to When you get to yours? Yeah, yeah. Okay. My number eight is Halloween 4. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, because we're right there, you know, and I feel like we're going through the same thing with the fucking mask, you know, with, with that Captain Kirk mask, that uh-huh. beautiful Tommy Lee Wallace designed mask. And again, it's part of the poster. Yeah. And um, that's what I mean. And then then the mask we get in the movie is like. It's not. What is that? It, it literally looks <clears throat> like one of those. Halloween masks you would find at like a knockoff Halloween store. <laughs> you know, this is it, it, yeah, it's, Freddie Myers. It's, <laughs> it was it was they weird. Don't, they don't want to breach any sort of copyright. It was yeah, it was very very weird. It was like a ruby mask or something, well, man. It was bizarre. When I get to it, I'm going to defend that mask. Okay, please do because I will because I, I I was not but, I was not a fan. But I don't like that the advertisements showed. Michael's mask. Yeah, neither do I. Because I think the posters for four and five are fucking amazing. Yeah. The posters are great. Post, especially five. Yeah. Just the knife coming down mm-hmm. the middle. Oh my God. Super yeah. cool. Yeah. But no, they're it, great. It doesn't give you what you came for. No, it does not. No, it does not at all. Um, so what I'm gonna do, my number eight is Halloween five. And I don't care for a lot of it. Halloween four ends with such a promising shock. Such a shock. That five should have hit the ground running. Instead, it just hits the ground and crawls for a little while. Daniel Harris's character is suddenly mute Mm -hmm. and psychic. Mm. (laughs) Dr. Loomis is probably the biggest prick he's ever been in any of the movies. Mm -hmm. He's practically abusive to the kid. Um, He's he's more than obsessive. It's just he's there's nothing likable about him in that movie. Yeah. And the main chick, I think her name's Tina. This little Demi Moore looking chick yeah, has got to be one of the most irritating characters I've ever seen in a Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. She just runs around the movie acting like a complete ditz and she survives way too goddamn long. (laughs) She's in most of the – she's like the primary protagonist when it should have been Danielle Harris. Mm -hmm. It should have been her movie. Danielle is sidelined in her own movie big time. And even the scenes she's in, it's like just pretend you can't speak. (laughs) And it's like come on. But what kind of saves five for me is the last half hour. 
There is a lot of fun cat and mouse shit in the Myers house. Yeah. Him stabbing through the uh, the ventilation while she's trying to climb up the chute. Scary as fuck. Uh, the attic where he's got the coffin for her. Super creepy set. Um, even though the Myers house looks kind of like a castle now. There's like turrets. Yeah. Um, and I believe, I forget the guy's name, but he's he's in the Frighteners uh, he's in Ace Ventura, but he's like this, he's a cop in Halloween five mm-hmm. and he's the one, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. He's the one that tells Danielle, you know, you're a very brave little girl. Oh, okay. His real um, name is something Evans. Um, I and I believe he was a real cop. Yeah. 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 Life. Yeah. Um, Troy Evans. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Super great actor. Good character actor, mm-hmm. but his character is. Is only in it briefly. He's literally there because to make... he's got that voice. He does. I and love that voice. He's got he a good has. authoritative voice. Yeah. But there's all these unlikable characters in this movie, and then in the last half hour, there's him. Yeah. And he's sitting next to Danielle, and he's just like, "You're gonna, you're gonna be all right. You know, you're a brave kid." Yeah. And blah blah blah. And it's like he should have been the cop. Yeah. In the entire movie, definitely. And he goes out. Like a hero. Mm-hmm. And I just remember lamenting the fact that, wow, you had one good character and you just threw him at the end of the flick. Yeah. I really enjoy his character. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, yeah, there's a lot of cool Halloween vibes in the movie. There's a lot of cool sets. Um, it's void of scares. It is, definitely. It's not scary at all. A couple characters get offed that... Probably should have gotten better, mm-hmm. deserved better, I should say. But um, for the most part, it and the, the filmmakers will tell you, Danielle, everybody, when four was such a hit, they rushed five. Yeah. Like four was still in theaters and they were like, get to work on yeah. five now. And it feels so rushed. It feels like it from beginning to end. It's just kind of a mess. It's a coherent mess, but it's. Like I said, a lot of unlikable characters. Yeah. Hard to root for anybody. Michael's mask is fucking dumb. Yeah, it is. They, they're they terrible. And that was that's the only one in the series I can think of where they do try to humanize him. Okay. Because she asks him, uncle. Oh, yes. Let me see. Yeah. And he takes his mask off and there's a tear. Yeah. And was it needed? Not at all. Because then he just spazzes out and tries to kill her anyway. Mm-hmm. And it was like, ah, eh, you know, I don't really get what the point was, but yeah. that was the only time in the core series mm-hmm. where I feel like they tried to humanize Michael. Yeah. And it was it was useless. Yep. Well, I'll move on from my my number seven because we already kind of discussed it and we and I you know we kind of felt the same way, but mine's just higher on the list and that was um resurrection. Was it resurrection? Yeah. My number seven is H two O. We kind of don't have to talk about that one. Yeah, exactly. But I will say for H two O in its defense, I I I didn't say it while you were talking. Mm-hmm. It was written as a Halloween. Okay. It, it wasn't yeah. henpicked like Dimension does. Yeah. It was Jamie's and John's attempt to write the ship after six. Okay. They were like, maybe if I come back and we continue the story after two, and pretend that four through six didn't happen. We'll give it the old college try. Mm -hmm. And when I first saw it, I didn't like it at all. Having watched it over the years, it's grown on me. I think it's a decent flick now, but it's still number seven. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So. Okay. Well, my number six, and we can kind of move past it as well because we kind of talked about it and and that was uh, Halloween Ends. Okay. What was, uh, did you have any particular beef or did we kind of, you know, I, I really didn't, man. Um, you know, I, I'm not gonna, I'll, I'm not gonna hundred percent defend it. I was going to say, you obviously liked it at least three steps above mine. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, you dug it more than I, I did. I think it's just because it was one of those things again where, and I did like all of the, uh, Christine references. You know, I, I didn't I, mind the references. I just didn't think it needed to be a majority of the plot. For sure. Yeah, that that's what I meant. Like yeah. I, I did like all the reference stuff. Um I did like the violence. I like the makeup effects. Um and I do like uh Christopher Nelson's Michael Myers designs. Yeah. No, that I mask agree. is fucking rad. I agree. You know, yeah. and they get, you know, better with each movie he did. Because it ages realistically. Yeah, and it's cool. Yeah. And you know, and the thing is is like with this movie, you know, this is basically 
all the other ones are void. They don't they don't exist. You know, it's just Halloween one, and then and then it's Halloween. Halloween kills and Halloween ends. Yeah. Okay. And that's where the choose your own adventure. Exactly. Yeah. So, and and that's how how John and those guys wanted it. Like get rid of everything else. Um, So it's like, if that's the case, then yes, Michael Myers is just an old tired man. I don't really see him as passing the torch. I see him as just getting ready to die. And then there was this kid who was fucked up in his own right. Kind of got, he got a little more, attached to the craziness yeah and decided you know what let me fucking just be him then Mm -hmm. and i just don't think michael was at full power because he was like what 63 60 something like that but and the kid like kicked his ass and yeah his mask yeah it's like and i know you don't want to see that as a fan you know of michael myers but it's like could he have done that in 78 or or uh 81 true no he couldn't have could he do it you know when michael was like almost 70 and you're a young man in your 20s yeah you could have my only caveat to that is the fact that he took on an entire mob of course and that's what i mean and and i see and you know what that's the writing that's them not really fleshing this out sure this that's them like okay we wrote something good for that now let's just move on oh this is the way the story is going to go right there is a lot of contradictory stuff that's like "Mm, i don't know very much so. you know so because like and we did kind of time jump a little bit uh, definitely time jump i don't remember how far after kills ends takes place yeah it's a it's a while it's a minute yeah, yeah it is because you know she's moved to the city and she bought a kinda, house and yeah everyone's you know, they've moved over. on you know yeah and, and and you know i mean it's it's one of those things where i looked at the one uh you know when when he's fighting everyone on the street i look at that as kind of like the old universal monsters pitchforks and torches kind of where everyone comes together to kill the monster mm-hmm. you know but it's like mm, the monster has one last fucking surprise for you guys yeah but then no he doesn't (laughs) you know what i mean and it's like then he's he's thrown into a meat grinder (laughs) yeah yeah you know so i didn't hate it i I really didn't like i i just i thought it was fun still i just think it's okay i didn't find it fun i didn't have fun with it no no i will say this i don't like the locations um i don't i don't like where they shot you talking about any of the last three the last three Really? Okay. Yeah. You, okay. That doesn't feel like Haddonfield, Illinois, to me. Okay. You know what I mean? Like that. It just it feels like down south. Hmm. And where do they shoot that? Like South Carolina, probably North Carolina, that, something like that. that yeah. Or Georgia. Everything's yeah. done in Georgia yeah. nowadays. Um. Yeah. No, that's a good, good question. Yeah. And it, well, especially the third one. This this ends that you were talking about. There's a whole sequence in this doctor's Art Deco. Mm-hmm. LA looking house. Yeah. It just looks very yeah. posh. Yeah. And then even like Lori's house, it looked like they were in like Ottawa, Canada or something. You know, it just <laughs> yeah, didn't, kinda. you know, it didn't feel like, you know, Haddonfield, Illinois. To no, me. no, it didn't. I will say before we move on to the next one, have you read the novelization of the first book? Have not. The prologue to the original book, um, the author came up with this story about a disfigured slave servant guy in like yield in Ireland kind mm-hmm. of deal during the Samhain celebration. Yeah. He wants to dance at this party with the princess. She basically scoffs. You're ugly. Get out of my face. And the spirit of Samhain possesses him and he mindlessly murders everyone at this festival. Mm-hmm. Then we jump ahead to 19. 19- 68 is that one michael oh oh the, yeah yeah i think yeah. it was yeah it was 10, 10 years prior yeah right? yeah 60 yeah there's a bit of a prologue where michael's talking he's dressed as a clown he's ready to go trick-or-treating and then grandma notices something in his eyes something that doesn't seem right mm-hmm. and she warns michael's parents before your grandfather went off the deep end I saw that look and I lost him. And she's like, just watch him tonight. And they were like, ah, he's fine. He's just had a lot of candy. The idea that Michael is being launched forward by the spirit of Samhain, this Celtic deity, I feel like David Gordon Green and his crew probably incorporated that into Halloween Ends because 
Michael is an aging vessel. Mm -hmm. The spirit needs somebody else. And there's a great scene in Ends where the dad of the kid he was babysitting says, everyone's been wrong to this kid. Accidents happen. I don't blame him. Saw him walking on the side of the road and pulled over. And when he looked in the car, that was not the kid Mm -hmm. who babysit my kid. My kid. Something in his eyes. Wasn't him anymore. I feel like Halloween Ends has more to do with the prologue to the novelization especially okay. than any movie in the entire franchise because that's where I feel like they were trying to find a way to incorporate the spirit of Samhain transferring okay. from an aged shell yeah. to a youthful, psych- a, a broken kid mm-hmm. that it can use as a vessel. You right, know? right. And I kind of gave Halloween Ends credit for that because it felt – Different, but yeah. still within line with the franchise, at least for the hardcores who ate up all the other media. It's a deep cut, but it's uh, – I think that's what they were trying to do, possibly. Okay. I get that. What was your last one? Was that six? Yeah, my six was Halloween Ends. Okay, my six is Halloween 2, 1981. Wow. A little further down the list. Yeah. I do like Halloween 2. We've gotten to a point on our lists where everything from here on up, I like – uh-huh. I just like some more than others. Right. Halloween 2, I do enjoy. Fun movie. Fun kills. The deadest hospital in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. Every hospital I've ever been in, I've sat for six hours because it's just jumping. This place, you could bite into a candy apple and get a razor blade in your mouth. Like, yeah. Like the kid in the movie, which always makes my fucking toes curl. It'd probably be seen right away. Right, right, <laughs> right. So I was like, you know, Haddonfield Memorial, not exactly jumping. My only real beef with Halloween 2, aside from the Star Wars twist Mm -hmm. where we are – we're connecting family dots, it's just the fact that Jamie Lee Curtis is just sort of sidelined. This is her sequel. I'm not sure if she wanted to come back. Who knows? Maybe this was contractual. But she wears a bad wig and just lays in bed the whole movie. Kind of sucked. Didn't really care for that. But you do get a lot more Michael. You do get a lot more Loomis. And the the cat from, uh, was it Last Starfighter? Uh, you know, the, he's like, what was he, an EMT? Mm-hmm. Something like that. He was a fun new character. He was all right. He was kind of a good guy to root for. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, Halloween 2 is mostly fun for being, A, a continuation of the same night as opposed to jumping to next Halloween. Mm-hmm. And B, yeah, it was kind of trying to... Join the ranks with Friday the 13th and make things a little messier, a little mm-hmm. nastier. And they didn't do it to a degree that would have been like, uh, you right. know. No, uh, probably the worst part is a needle in the eye. One guy takes a hammer to the head. My favorite death is the chick in the hot tub. That's just brutal to watch because she just keeps coming out more blistered and fucked yep. up. That was scary. There's a couple good solid jump scares. Yeah. But that one is number six for me just because... The five above it, I like more. That's all. Okay. My number five is Halloween Kills. Okay. I did like it a lot because of the flashbacks. Oh, the flashbacks were amazing. Now, here's my complaint. Okay. If they really wanted to redo this whole series and do away with a bunch of movies and 81's Halloween 2 never existed. Mm Mm-hmm. Then they should have done 78, and then they should have done 2018 as the flashback, the whole movie. Oh, the whole movie taking place yeah, in 78. Yeah, because you know, it would have opened up people's eyes as to why Lori is so crazy now. Sure. Because if you think about it, if they got rid of two in 81, mm-hmm. and she just had that one night with him, from 78 to 2018... She went off the fucking deep end after this one night became, and he killed a couple people. Became a survivalist. And there's no like family connection. There's no nothing. And now she's like got this compound and traps and she's like, you know, alienated herself from her family and just yeah. went went off the deep end. Yeah. You know, but, you know, having said that, 
I did love the flashback stuff because it was just so in tune with 78. It was so well made. Like that mask looked just like 78. The Loomis makeup. The guy who looked like Loomis, it made my hair stand insane. up. Insane. You know, I that was... coupled with an amazing voiceover. Yep. You know, I was like, wait, did they shoot this in 78 and it... just bring it back now? Yeah, you would have thought that they did like a Forrest Gump and CGI today's people into old footage exactly. that's how well it looked even down to the kundi lighting mm-hmm. um it was fantastic the yeah. flashbacks the flashback opening to that film and that's what did it for me it's it's the best part of the movie yeah and because i i feel like but that I, movie i do really enjoy that movie i do too <clears throat> and but i feel like that movie is 100 percent frankenstein yes or Bride of. Yeah, him, yeah. Him yeah, coming yeah. out of the rubble and just fucking shit up. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you know the uh, now the, the one thing that I could have done without. Okay. And this is no, I'm not disparaging him as an actor mm-hmm. because I do like his previous movies. Mm-hmm. Anthony Michael Hall. Didn't like him? He was too much for me. Okay. The whole evil dies tonight. Everyone hated evil dies <laughs> tonight, like, but I... I dug it only because, like you said, the Universal Monsters, this was the village. Yeah. Getting pissed and running out. Let's kill the monster. Of you course. Know? And it just felt par for the course. I didn't mind it as much. I as think it was just did. him because I felt like it was just the same character he played in Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> just, you know, kind of a bitter. I would son rather. Of a bitch. I, yeah. I mean, you know what? Be rusty. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, because. That's who Tommy was as a kid. But you know what? If anyone should have been more fucked up, it should have been the kids. I mean, it should have been. Because that would have been a traumatizing night in a young person's right. life. But I'm saying like. So him and, is it. Uh, Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm picturing her yelling it while she's stuck in the window. Yeah. But see, Lindsay, Tommy is, and, she's got it together though. She does. I mean, clearly she's. And she, she's, and she was tough. Yeah. In that movie. She was a good, tough character both of them felt pretty battle-born after 78 Mm -hmm. i think um i think again this is just i think they should have just cast someone else in the role that's all it was i I think it was just his performance i I didn't have a problem with the character i think it was just his performance well what's funny is i actually gravitated more towards broad street playing uh um the bully as a kid in 78 Okay. Him grown up. Okay. Um, okay. I forget the kid's name, but he, the fact that he became friends with the kid he bullied, mm-hmm. you know, Tommy. Yeah. Like he just turned into a good guy. Yeah. And um, Broad Street, who's in a lot of Flanagan stuff, you know, he's like one of the Dudleys in Haunted House. Haunted yeah. Haunted of Hill House. He brought a lot to that character, which was not an important character. Mm-hmm. He was just a bully in the first movie. And yeah. That's you just move on. Yeah. They gave him a character and I liked that. And I liked that he was tight with Tommy and Lindsay and the nurse mm-hmm. that they brought back, you know, um, I enjoyed all that about kills, but I, uh, I will get more into what I like about it in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> was that your number five? That was my number five. My number five is a little different. Okay. My number five is Season of the Witch. Okay. Now, did you just dry heave? Did you just fucking... A little bit. Do you... Are you still... No, no. I was going to say, are you still one of those that's... No, and I'll tell you why. No, because I'll tell you why. Because that movie has created a lot of converters. Yeah, I know. I know. Lots of them. And you know what? Halloween uh, Kills, it was great seeing the the Don Post masks. Oh, of course. They were even in 18, if you watch carefully. Yes, yes. Um... Yeah, that that was a really cool throwback. Mm-hmm. Um, as a Halloween film, yeah, this if you asked me this twenty years ago, it probably would have been dead last because it was just so stupid. Uh, I watch it now, and it's a body snatchers flick. It's invasion of the body snatchers with fucking robots and masks that melt your head, and yeah. has nothing at all to do with Michael Myers, yeah. Haddonfield. It's the bastard stepchild, right? But. It was the movie that Carpenter and crew wanted to start a franchise with because Halloween 2 mm-hmm. killed Michael Myers. He's done. He's dead. Yeah. Let's move on. And every year was going to be a new Halloween film with right. a new monster. It was like a um, like an EC comic or something. Right. It was an experiment. Yeah. And it failed yeah. miserably. I, don't, I think it failed because they didn't explain it. No. I don't think they did it either. I, I mean, even the previews don't. You watch the old TV spots and trailers. They don't give you shit. Mm-mm. It's just... 
the night nobody came home. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, did Michael kill everyone? And it's, no, it's a body snatcher movie. It's yeah. robots and conspiracy and toy makers. And yeah. at the top of the fucking heap is Tom motherfucking act, the Burt Reynolds of our genre. And uh, I watch it now and it's, to me, it's such a fucking hoot. It's funny. It's ridiculous. It's exciting. It's gory. It's nasty. I never gave it the fair shake. And I think a lot of people didn't. When I bought the Scream Factory box set back in, I don't know, 12 or 13, whenever it was, and started going through them again, I gave it another watch and was pleasantly surprised at how hard I was like chuckling and yeah, just kind of like, oh man, you know, this character is so fucking, is there a woman in this movie Tom Atkin hasn't fucked? <laughs> Cause like every chick that he hangs with, he gives her a quick smack on the ass. Like, yeah. Hey, huh, maybe, maybe Friday. Let's get, let's get yeah. together. It was just funny. And it was, it's just a good Carpenter esque film. It's a great Tommy Lee Wallace film. Probably one of my favorite soundtracks of the Halloween series, just in terms of, Carpenter and Hoarth synthing it up. Excellent soundtrack. Um, it I I do top it over Halloween too, only because it's almost like that Jaws three vibe again, where I'm like, this is really different. It's kind of a fuck you, and I I'm, I'm kind of here for it. Yeah, I really like it. So Halloween three is pretty high on my list. I okay. will admit that's my number five. My number four, and and it, it's a quick one. Because there isn't too much substance in it for me to like hate or love. And that's and yet it's kinda high. It is high because it's like it's just a fun movie for me. It's just, it's just fun. And that was twenty eighteen. Hall- okay. Halloween. And, and and there's one specific reason. I love Toby Huss. And he played the dad. Played, oh um, um uh, what's her name? Allison's dad. Yes. Funny guy. His character, like with the bullets and the bleeding. Yeah, I fuck, <laughs> yeah. I loved I loved it. Like he it was, was great. It was cool, but I just didn't like the locations. And I know I keep going back to locations on this shit, but I just... But you're a filmmaker. Yeah, I just... I didn't like the locations, you know? It's like in... I understand why they picked the location of her, like, seclusion. Oh, sure. You know yeah. you know what I mean? But it was just like, mm, no. And all, honestly, it's like as soon as, soon as Toby Huss was out, I was kind of like, okay, I'll just throw back my popcorn and just enjoy it until it's over, and then I'm good. <laughs> but I wanted him to, like... Through the whole thing, because sure. I, I love that kind of a character. Yeah, he was great. He was, yeah. he was good comic relief. Yeah. Um, no. He was a fun guy. Um, so, that, so that was, so now I'm down to my last three. Well, my number four is Kills. <sighs> okay. I think it's, even including the Rob Zombie ones, probably the most violent, because it is an absolute, it's just one massacre after another. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Fireman Massacre, fucking amazing. The Mob Massacre at the end, fucking amazing. I, I also liked... The fact that it, this is a timing thing, mm-hmm. and uh, at the risk of getting into any other topics, this movie came out not too damn long after January 6th, and there was an eeriness to seeing the mob in the hospital chasing the wrong guy. Do you remember that? Yeah. There was the little penguin-looking yeah, yeah. dude, and it kind of showed Haddonfield as a real pit because of what Michael was doing. One man turned an entire town into an ugly, disgusting mob that was willing to kill anyone that they thought looked wrong. Even if that was Michael, he wasn't clearly. And that was to me, one of the scarier things about Halloween kills was the fact that Michael's not the only threat. Now, now mob mentality is the threat because now innocent people are going to die that have nothing to do with Michael. You know, people are getting trampled. You're in a hospital. There's people injured all over the place and you're trampling. You right. Know? It was just an ugly mob scene mm-hmm. and it was creepy to watch. And it was, and, and we were still seeing stuff like that on the news. So it felt real in a way that most Halloween movies don't. Right. So it felt topical, but at the same time, it was such a vicious movie. And that goes back to what we were talking about with Rob Zombie, how... Tyler was maybe excessive. Mm-hmm. The quiet way that Michael just kept putting knives in the guy's back until he found the one that he liked. It was sick, but it was cool. It yeah. was like, oh, fuck, he is fucking this guy up. But it wasn't excessive like Tyler where he's bringing it up right, clear from the hip. Right, right. But it was just like th- this woman, I think he slit her throat 
Oh, he had punctured her with a fluorescent bulb. So you get this horrifying shot of her bleeding out, unable to move, forced to watch her husband thrown over a counter and just getting knives yeah. put into his back one after the other until he found the one he liked and was yeah. like, all right, I'm going to fucking leave. <laughs> and it was just, there were moments like that where I would just look at like my brother. We wouldn't see it. And I'm just like. Holy fucking shit. It was just, to me, Halloween Kills is the most vicious, even in vibe, of the entire saga. It just, it was very, I don't want to say off-putting because that would It wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't off-putting because it it would suggest I didn't like it, but it was so, it's probably the most disturbing Mm -hmm. of the entire Well, because I think it's, you're not used to seeing him do that shit. No, and it was just, it was Michael in in a rage that I don't think we've seen before. I get a weird charge watching Halloween yeah, Kills. I yeah. think it's a phenomenal sequel. We're down to our last three. Top three. Okay, so my number three mm-hmm. is Halloween. The original 78. 1978. So yeah. that suggests that there's two more that you like more than the original. <laughs> okay. It's not that I... It's like, eh, it's not that at all. You no. know, um, it's just... It's it's a cool movie. It, it I like it. Yeah. You know, but it just... There's something, there's two more that I like better. Okay. That's all there is. You know, I have nothing negative to say about it. It's a masterpiece. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I actually love the lack of blood in it. Me too. You know, because it's funny when I hear people say, oh no, it's too gory for me. I've heard people say that. Not even close. And, and, but that's what, I think that's what John was trying to do. Right. It was like theater of your mind. Oh, you know, Toby Hooper. I mean, everyone says the same thing about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The title is what's putting you off. Mm -hmm. It's not a bloody movie at all. In fact, it's, I'm pretty sure it earned its R rating just for intensity. Yeah. I mean, I I, I bet they didn't even use a gallon of blood in Halloween. (laughs) No, not at all. No. In fact, that complaint would go towards Halloween kills or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Excessively violent, you know. Um, I'll even go a step further, sticking with yours in 78. Mm -hmm. I've said this before, and it's not a popular opinion. But as much as I love Halloween, I still think The Fog is a better Carpenter film. I remember you saying that. I think it's much scarier. I think it's much moodier. I think visually it's a better place than Haddonfield. But yeah, that's it's another thing where if Fog was on this list, if we were doing a list of Carpenter films, my Halloween would be behind The Fog, probably. Um, My number three is Halloween 18. Okay. Um, I was just happy to see it get back to basics. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about it already. Uh, I do love a lot of what goes on in Halloween 18. I love the mask mm-hmm. and the realistic way that it rotted. Yeah. Um, I love seeing him back in the saddle. I love seeing Jamie Lee Curtis play a different version. Because, again, in the Choose Your Own Adventure, you could jump to eight to H2O. And she's a well-adjusted, slightly traumatized, little guarded mm-hmm. Whereas this one, she's gone completely survivalist, Ted yeah. Nugent. Like, I'm just, f- fuck everybody. Yeah. Uh, to the point where she's alienated her daughter and her granddaughter. And, mm-hmm. um, what I will say before moving on, because we did talk about this one at length. Yeah. When you say, yes, one night as opposed to two would make her a survivalist. My only caveat to that, and I, I, I agree for the most part. If you look at it almost in terms of a rape victim instead of a stabbing victim. I mean, yeah, but he didn't. He didn't, but trauma is trauma. It is, but but here's the thing, though. I could see it ruining her life, but to a survivalist extent, no. I don't even see how it could ruin her life because at the end of the day, in her mind, he didn't take anyone from her. All of her friends. No, but but I know, but I'm not like family members. You know what I mean? mean, Yeah, yeah. You know? And so... And what did she really get? A slice on the arm? Yeah. Not even a full penetration, but a slice on the arm. She fucked him up more than he fucked her up when she jammed that fucking sewing needle in his neck. She did. She did. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's She like, put up a good fight. She did put up a good fight. And if like if we were to go down and figure out how much screen time Lori and Michael have fighting. Mm-hmm. It's not much. No, it's not. It, she, she. I think she sees him in class and around town more than up close and personal. when they're face to face. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I don't even see the trauma there. I see like 
some of the other people, like Tommy and, and Lindsay. Tommy and Lindsay would have made more sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, But I guess you wouldn't be able to say any of them could have walked away with that kind of trauma. Yeah. And they died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I mean, I agree with you to an extent, but I, also, but I understand where you're coming from. Like with, with, with that trauma, with trauma I, yeah. being trauma, because yeah. we don't know how someone will react. That's to someone's mental things. psyche. Right. Plus devil's advocate. We did kind of get to see, already see the other side of the coin. The H2O version is probably more realistic. Right. Right. And this is just me basing it off of John and them's theory. Sure. Of getting rid of everything else. Oh, sure. Yeah. And I do agree that. Yeah. Uh, Halloween 2 included would have made her much more of a recluse. Yeah. Because he followed her to the hospital. So, yeah, 18, I, I love it. I do love the Okay. Movie. So, I'm going to say my two, which is going to reveal my one. <laughs> to be honest? Yeah. I've sort of not been following your numbers. Okay. So Well, I know, like, listeners are going to, as soon as I say this, what my number two is, they're going to know what my favorite movie is out of the whole series. Okay. Because I've... I've, yeah, I've purposely not paid attention to your order. Right, right. I've addressed it as you've said it, but I'm not making, I'm not taking account. Yeah. Okay. So, so my my number two is Halloween three. Oh wow, that's pretty high on the list. It is because I saw it in a theater and I loved it from day one, and I never. So you were never part of that class. Not not, not for a second. Wow. Yeah. Not for a second. Nope. I was I was one of the cliche. I was one of the ones who was like, what is what, what what's happening? Yeah. What no, is this? I. I don't know what it was. I, I, it was like, I didn't care. You know, I, I really didn't care. It was, I was more hooked on the imagery of mm -hmm. the town, mm. um, the, the creepiness, the mm -hmm. unsure. I loved all that shit. Not just that, but those fucking masks are some of the best masks in oh, cinema them. history, I, in my I, opinion. I would love to collect them all if they yeah. were still out there. They're fucking amazing. Yeah, I think they go for and a pretty it, penny now. They do, yeah. And it's like, you know, I mean, uh, of course, Atkins, how could we? I mean, he's the dude can do no wrong. The dude's fucking amazing. Yeah. Even, Everything he does. Even in the worst movie, you're going to love him. Yeah. No matter what. Exactly. So I loved everything about Halloween 3. No, I fell into the same trap as everyone else. Yeah, no, I never did. Um, I really did. I was disappointed. Didn't really get what was going on. And when you check out that hard, you're not looking at the things that you could appreciate it for. Mm -hmm. And over the years where I would read about what what the purpose was originally, what it could have been, what they were trying to do. Yeah. It didn't really it didn't really bunge my needle any, but it was like, oh well, I understand. Yeah, I think had they marketed differently. Or if they would have just stated the obvious. You could have even done one of those taglines that was like, if you thought Michael was scary. Yeah. Just those it words. Could have, it could have you been. You would have been like, okay, we're not dealing with Michael now. Yeah. Okay. It could have been down to the name. It could have just been Season of the Witch, John, a Halloween tale. Yeah. John Carpenter's Season of the Witch, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But it was, it was advertised as a Halloween film. Mm-hmm. Erroneous. And I think they shot their so I think they shot themselves in the foot over that. They did. Marketing you know? was horrible. Yeah. It um, was. Even in retrospect, I watch it and I'm like, no. Yeah. Um, but Halloween three, I just I popped it in one day and I got so caught up in the music. Yeah. And like you said, the setting, mm -hmm. the performances, the violence, the masks. It was so absurdly funny and creepy at the same time. And boy. Pretty vicious. We're, we, the entire plot revolves around wanting to murder every kid in the world. Yeah, children. Mm -hmm. uh, that's worse than anything Michael's mm -hmm. ever done. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and and there that scene where the kid, his head dissolves during the test into bugs and into bugs and snakes and yeah. shit. That is a deeply disturbing scene. Mm -hmm. It is really creepy. Yeah. Um, but it was just, yeah, it took me. 15 years or so i don't i couldn't tell you when i saw the first time in the yeah that next time where i watched it and was like it's kind of a fucking good movie no, what was a, i thinking? oh god it was so good yeah i yeah, really it I, was so good i'm a convert I, yeah. i'm a shameless convert i'll admit yeah. it all day so i only have one left so well my number two is halloween four Okay. I do think it's the best sequel. Wow, that went up there. That's high. It is high. God I, damn. And that one, that that's one that um, after the disappointment of three yeah. in those days, I was happy to see Michael again. I was happy 
I was unnerved by the opening credits, which we've talked about. Mm-hmm. It's probably the most Halloweenish. Yeah, it is vibe. It's just got this cloudy, murky sky, and yeah. it's windy. It's definitely cool. It's super cool. Um, and I like that we were moving on from Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, it's her niece. It's not a big jump. Mm-hmm. But we also had Dr. Loomis back. Mm-hmm. We had some really good gore. Yeah, no, the gore was great. The, the gore g- in that movie. I mean, the guy he reaches into the truck and rips the guy's throat open. Yeah. That's a great scene. I mean, we're scene. still, that's 88. So it's like we're still in the in, in the heyday we're, of We're horror, in the renaissance of makeup effects. Yeah. yeah and this, that, that Halloween was like, we're not, we're not going to pull any punches. He's going to grab a shotgun from someone and just impale him with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which was fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, I loved the new theme with Howarth. It was great. Um, loved the massacre for him to escape where he just tears up everyone in the ambulance. Um, the performance by Daniel Harris at such a young age mm-hmm. is so mature and so beyond her years. That how can you not be terrified for her? Yeah. Because she is so small and so innocent. This isn't high school kids smoking pot. This is a little kid. She's a tyke. Mm -hmm. And she's being chased by Michael. And uh, she exuded a level of fear and vulnerability that not many children can. And I thought that elevated the material quite a bit. I thought the final shot of the movie is absolutely fucking genius. Mm -hmm. I think that twist at the end is up there with like Psycho 2 in terms of just, you you did did not just end it this way. Holy fuck. Great ending. Mm -hmm. Um, And before I move on, my defense of the mask. Okay. (laughs) It is not a Michael Myers mask. It's just a white mask. Yeah. But over the years, I've come to appreciate it as the shape. Okay. Because the point of the Shatner mask, the point of that one was that it was supposed to be just a blank, featureless, white face. It has never been more blank and featureless Mm -hmm. than it is in four. There's no contours. There's no cheekbones. It's just black eyes and a white face. And he looks, in my opinion ghostlier than in any other Halloween because it is so blank. To me, that was the essence of the shape in yeah. quotes because he didn't even look human. It didn't look human anymore. Right, right. Whereas the other masks look human. It looks like right. a guy wearing a Shatner mask. Yeah. Uh, so that is my defense of what most would probably just call a basic white mask. Mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of what made it creepy was that right. it was – It was just shy of a ghost. Mm -hmm. To me, one of the most iconic shots of the movie is where you see him rise up from the side of her bed and turn to look at her with the lightning. Yeah. It makes my hair stand up. It's Mm -hmm. so fucking brilliant. But uh, yeah, I love, absolutely love Halloween 4. And that was the one that kind of rejuvenated my interest in the series after 3 disappointed me as a kid. We don't talk about my number one that much because, I mean, we already did talk about it. And that was Halloween 2. That's my favorite one of the whole series. Halloween 2, 81. 81. Yeah. Yeah, That's my favorite one of the whole series. And it's just, you know, I love that continuation. Yeah. You know, the instant um, right after the first one ends, you know. Yeah. Which a lot of of sequels didn't do. No. No, they didn't. Usually sequels will pick you up months later. Yeah. And and I I loved, I loved that it was in a hospital. Yeah. You know, I love that setting. I love the characters. It was very 80s. It was like still... Everything 80s for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I love the trick-or-treating. Which is love, funny because the 80s were just getting wound up. They were. But it know? was just like, that's exactly what I... that This is what I wanted. Yeah. You know, um, I, I love the the makeup effects. I loved I loved the Ben Tramer shit, you know, <laughs> like him coming back and getting it. You know, that was so fucking awesome. <laughs> Which was funny because Ben Tramer looks like a 10-year-old. Yeah. When... They talk about him in the first one like he's in their class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, fucking because it was just like, who the fuck is this kid? And then yeah. it was like, oh my god. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's just a fun movie because it's, you know, it's. I, I love the soundtrack. Soundtrack's great. I love the way it ends. I love the the way the the Mr. Sandman at the, the cor- end. The it's cordettes. just, oh yeah, it's like they do a great perfect. job with that. It is, you know, great. it's like especially because it's like hazy, you know, like mm-hmm. foggy at the end, you know, and it's just like it's over. It's over. It's the dust over. is settling. He's he's done. Yeah. It's over. That's why I think I was like excited like for Halloween three because I was like, all right, what's next now? I don't. I'm not saying I was like you know I, I was ahead of the curve and like I knew what was what was up, but sure. I was like, 
in my mind thinking like, okay, what else is going to happen on Halloween? Well, we weren't in an era yet where seeing a killer blown to bits didn't necessarily mean the end. Yeah. This was still in the days where he looks pretty definitively dead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I would have probably thought the same thing. Yeah. But when I was getting into the Halloween movies, we were up to five. Yeah. You know, and I, I knew after part two that I'm like, he's, he's back. I mean, I literally seen from 81 up, I seen them all. Yeah. So you went in without knowing which one was going to be next or what they were doing. Yeah. Uh, I got into horror around the age of 10 and by 10, I was like, this was like 91, 92, you know? So, I mean, by that point, sequels, sequelitis Mm -hmm. was already a huge thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I got to Halloween two, I was like, yeah, he's not dead. There's There's a Halloween three, four and five. My number one is, of course, number one. Yeah. It's very cliche, I know. But it's <laughs> it was the first time I ever got to see Michael Myers. It was the first ride I got to go on. And it was maybe the second John Carpenter movie I ever saw. Okay. I just, I really got swept up in the look. I got swept up in the music. Um, the fact that he wasn't just jumping out of every corner that I could be watching it. And I'm like, is that him? Is he just lurking? And it was... Creepy in a very realistic way. Right. Before it got outlandish. Yeah. Um, but it was, to me, the first one's just a good, calm springboard to a franchise that could go anywhere. And mm-hmm. it did. Out of all of them, the first one, the first one and four both feel the most like home to yeah. me when it comes to Halloween. They just, they put me back to that age. So yeah, the first one's my favorite. Probably... More out of a sense of nostalgia and just how I felt Mm -hmm. watching it. I mean, I think a lot of people are that way. And I'm sure, yeah. And and I think that's why I didn't pick it as a number one, because that is what it is for me. You know, I don't have any qualms with it No, no. It's just, it's to me, it was just, I knew I was starting something Mm -hmm. special. Yeah. Well, you're right. It's home. Yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, I was going to pick the one that was just the most fun to me. Because it's like, I, I knew the story. Now yeah. I get to have fun with it. And I really had fun in 81, in the Halloween too. Sure. Nope. I agree. And yeah. yeah it's, it's not a big surprise that I liked it as number one. I think a lot of people do, yeah. like you said. But uh, for me, it's just a matter of, I could pop it in and it's one of my chicken soup movies. You know what I mean? Like, if I can't figure out anything else to watch and I'm in a bad mood, mm-hmm. Halloween will get me out of yeah. it. You know. I mean, I think for us doing our first franchise rating, this was a pretty good one. It was pretty good, and it was one of the bigger ones. I feel like other franchises probably wouldn't take us so long. It, if, no, it probably wouldn't. It probably Jason, wouldn't. probably. This is just so close to the heart. It is. It's a great, great yeah. series, uh, for better or worse. Yeah. You know, I, I would, I'd buy them all. Yeah. And I, I will, I'll con- you know, if they keep releasing, I'll keep buying. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll admit it. I am pretty much, I don't know which version I'm on anymore, mm-hmm. but I will say that the, the Scream Factory box set, it's done me pretty well. I, yeah. I, same. I, I've kind of just left it at that, but, uh, I've picked up obviously 18 through Halloween ends. Yeah. Uh, there's also a Halloween 25 years of terror documentary, mm-hmm. which is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, if you watch one through six or seven, I think they're all relative up to that point. It might have come out around the time eight did. Just great interviews, great retrospective. Yeah. A lot of good stuff out there for that. And yeah. so, yeah, look up Halloween 25 Years of Terror if you can. And uh, yeah, and again, if you're like me and you're a Bells and Whistles guy, there's so many Halloween Blu-rays and DVDs out there with documentaries and commentaries. And you really can't go wrong. They've kind of showered them all with a lot of good stuff. All right, well, until next time. See you guys.